Apple boxes are one of the most useful pieces of equipment on set and are commonly overlooked. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made a set of nesting apple boxes from a bunch of materials that I got from my local hardware store. Before I dive into how I made these apple boxes, I'd like to say that there's a full set of plans available in the description below. In the plans is a set of dimensions of each box, a cut list, and a layout of cutting all these pieces on a standard 4x8 foot sheet of plywood. These aren't dimensions that are standard across all apple boxes, I just made these for my needs and uses. In one set of nesting apple boxes, you will have a full, half, quarter, and flat apple box at your disposal. For the materials of this project, I used half inch Baltic birch plywood that was pre-finished on each side. This just means that the surface of the wood is sanded and cuts out a lot of the work later in the finishing process. You could easily use three quarter material here, but I thought the half inch would be easily strong enough and it helps reduce the weight as well. I sourced my material from a local Home Depot and when making projects with predetermined cuts, you can easily get the majority of your cuts done there at a small price. Due to the fact that I have access to a full shop, I just got panels cut for larger dimensions because I knew I could make all the cuts easily at home. For this video, I purchased two 4x8 sheets and this gave me three full nesting apple box sets with enough material over to make about half a set left. Now with that information, it's hard to determine how much material you want to buy, but I would just recommend getting two sheets and having that leftover wood for anything else that you want to do. Getting into the build, the first thing I did was make all the cuts on the cut list. I cut my largest dimensions first and then worked my way down the list. In order to get the most accurate cuts is to minimize the times you're changing a dimension that you're going to cut. For example, if I have to cut a bunch of pieces at 20 inches, I will make all those cuts before moving on. This is just something I learned from my woodworking hobby that you always just want to make all those cuts first and then move on to anything else you want to do. The next thing I did was cut the handle holes in the full and half apple boxes as these were easy to do while the boxes were apart. For this, I laid out my desired handle pattern on all the pieces. Now this isn't anything special, I just looked at a common apple boxes on the market and kind of made it up on the fly. The method I used was using a one inch Forstner bit to make the rounded edges of the handles and then connected those lines using a jigsaw. Now these weren't the straightest cuts, but with a round over and a lot of sanding, they turned out pretty well. With all the parts sorted, I moved on to the assembly process. For this, I used an air powered brad nailer with a combination of a water resistant wood glue and one inch brad nails. I joined the sides of the box first to the bottom, then the back ends, and finally the top with a method of applying glue, lining up all the joints, and then nailing them together. This was pretty much a rinse and repeat process for each box, except for the full apple box with the sliding door, as well as the flat apple. For the flat apple, I simply glued and clamped two pieces of material cut to the same dimension. Now this isn't completely necessary to have a full nesting set, but I travel a lot with my gear and my space is limited. So I wanted a set of apple boxes that I could easily transport and that, that didn't take up a lot of room. The sliding door of this set was made with the process of cutting a rabbit in the door and a small slot in the walls of the full apple box. As these cuts were both cross cuts, I used a homemade cross cut sled. This sled allows me to make cuts that are typically dangerous to make on a regular table saw. I set my blade to half of the material thickness using gauge blocks, in this case a quarter inch. After setting the blade height, to cut the rabbit on the door, I took small bites using the table saw up to my mark line. For the walls, I used the same blade height and then cut a quarter inch slot using the same process. To do this properly on a table saw, you'll have to use a flat bottom grind blade. Usually table saw blades have an alternating bevel on each tooth as it's more efficient to cut wood. This particular blade just leaves a clean cut and a, more importantly, a flat surface for the slot and rabbit. After assembly, I had to figure out some way to put a handle into the quarter apple box as well as the flat apple box. The quarter apple box was pretty simple. I just drilled a 7 8 hole into the middle of the piece and it acted kind of like a pull. For the flat apple boxes, I used a half inch bald nose bit and a router table to kind of cut a groove in the side of the box. This isn't completely necessary, I thought it would just act as a nice feature for pulling the box out of the nesting apple box, and it looks good as well. 
To smooth over the edges of all the boxes, I use a quarter inch round over bit to round over all the inside edges of the handles as well as the edges of the boxes. This is not completely necessary, but it is recommended to round over all edges with whatever you can because it prevents splintering and chipping when these boxes are handled. As these boxes will see a lot of abuse, it was a must for me. Another note I'd like to add is that I rounded off all the inside faces of the handles before assembly, as I wouldn't be able to reach them after they were put together. Before the finishing process, I wanted to add the logo of the production company that I'm a part of, and the typical way of doing this with wood is to burn it in. So with that, I made a branding iron. I won't be covering the process on how I exactly did that, but if you're interested, please let me know in the comments below. For the finishing process, I sanded all the faces to 220 grit. I was able to start with a finishing sandpaper as the material was already pre-finished and sanded. After sanding, I cleaned all the surfaces and finished with three coats of oil-based satin varnish, and I sanded in between applications. You can use any durable finish of your choice really, I just wanted something that would last and handle up to the abuse. Typically when running out equipment, I tend to add apple boxes to the list because there are so many uses for them. A few examples is raising a talent height, raising camera height, low angles for camera, putting them on a dolly track, and my personal favorite as a seat for crew. There are so many more applications for these, and the main reasons for making them was because I was tired of renting them out and not having access to them on my other personal productions. Now, I will admit that these took a lot of time, and if you have the money, you can easily buy them from your local grip or camera supplier. I just wanted something personalized and also just wanted to save some money. If you have any questions about this project or any suggestions for future filmmaking DIY projects, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.